Hi everyone, it's October 14, 2017. I want to thank my subscriber for sending this article along to me. Jim Stone wrote it. It's uh, California fires were not wild. They were engineered. And I was going to read this article full into a video, but another subscriber just sent me this video. And it's one of those automated reading machines which frankly annoys me. I have a hard time listening to that kind of read uh, by a computer, but if you want to listen to the article, you can click on the link below to Fires in California Were Not Wild, Wild They Were Caused, or you can click on the link below and read this article. Reading anything much about the fires this week in California will probably lead to the understanding that they were not natural. So Jim Stone writes about our evolving technology, the chemtrails, the physics of electricity. And yes, um, if, you, if you have done the research and you have the knowledge, and then you put that in your brain, which hopefully is still working, and if it is still working, you will even just logically know without having done any of the research, without having the knowledge of the technology that is being used, applied against Americans to destroy them, to destroy this country, if you don't have any knowledge about the chemtrails. All you need is some common sense to understand that the conditions were um, The conditions did not exist to cause 66 widely spaced massive wildfires that grew rapidly. Just prior, there was perfectly calm weather. 66 fires, miles apart, start pretty much at the same time. So, what could have brought that about? The technology, electromagnetic, microwave, directed energy, weapons, weapons that are being used. No, this is not a conventional war, but it is a war nonetheless. So you can read about how they can use uh, electromagnetic waves to drop electrical potentials into the air, where they can actually create lightning, or they can create sparks that can create fires. In Truth by Grace, has posted another video, which I will link to below, evidence of military grade electromagnetic frequency accelerants used in Sonoma Napa fires. Have you seen the video of this tree burning from the inside out? And I also want to bring your attention to this cold fusion fire from water. Now, I listened to this documentary and unfortunately my brain is not working very well so I would really have to do an awful lot of research to understand cold fusion but there is one subscriber who has alerted me to this video along with other videos but she said that her son feels that it was cold fusion that started these fires. So, I'm just putting it out there. And for those of you who still have a brain that works a little bit better than I do, perhaps in truth by grace or someone else, um, you know, they're, they're, we know about the electromagnetic waves. We know about radio waves. We know about microwave waves. We know about millimeter waves. We know about lasers. 
We know about these weapons, but if you think that is the exhaustive list of weapons that they have at their disposal, um, you're gravely mistaken. So uh, check out Cold Fusion, Fire from Water. These fires continue to rage out of control. They're a little bit more contained than they were in my previous video on these fires. I mentioned that I believe it was the Napa or Sonoma County fires that were like 10% contained. Um, they're a little bit more contained, but, but they are evacuating more towns in Santa Rosa. It looks like they're completely gutting Santa Rosa. Uh, but they are expecting winds tonight, like the winds they had Sunday night, that many of you who live in that area, my subscribers wrote, those winds came up out of nowhere that pushed those fires along. So yes, it's 36 people, 19 people in Sonoma County alone died. Santa Rosa, a city of 175,000 people. It's 45 miles northwest of San Francisco. Um, 100,000, 100,000 have been evacuated, which means that if they didn't have family to go to somewhere else, well, you can count on tens of thousands of people living in shelters again, again. So we have people living in shelters in California. We have people in shelters in Houston. People in shelters in Puerto Rico. God, we are getting so destroyed. Um, so yes, the death toll is now 36, and these winds they're expecting tonight, 40 to 45 miles per hour, which will help contribute to the spread and the intensity of the fire. And the fires are so fast that any hesitation, yeah, it does prove to be lethal. Many people are not getting alerts. Uh, in many, many areas, people don't have cell phone. The cell towers are not working, so they can't get the alerts. Even if they do, alert citizens that or residents of these areas that the fire that they need to get out but I showed in a video my last video posted on these fires that they weren't sending alerts to people for fear of mass panic oh that's right they didn't send an alert they didn't they didn't tell people in Houston to evacuate shelter in place Yeah, government's going to protect you. 100,000 people evacuated. Tens of thousands of firefighters, which includes 6,000 prison inmates fighting these fires, making about $2 an hour. So California, yes, California seems to be the one state that is heading, heading the way for all of us. Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, vaccines, um, the uh, illegal immigrants, California. Is it now a sanctuary state? They don't just have sanctuary cities. These fires, the geoengineering of massive drought, you guys are being so destroyed. But now, Governor Brown, Moonbeam, has declared a state of emergency over deadly, a deadly hepatitis A outbreak. 
So you get the state of emergency for the fires. You have state of emergency for hepatitis A outbreak. Um, hepatitis A in California, 490 cases in San Diego, 71 in Santa Cruz, 13 in Los Angeles, 7 cases elsewhere. Elsewhere? In the state? Elsewhere. Okay. That's good reporting, Los Angeles Times. Um, so, apparently, hepatitis A was pretty much eliminated. It, we didn't have a problem with this in um, our entire country. But, oh, it's coming back. Yeah, like all diseases are coming back. And who knows if this reporting is actually a lie or the truth. They could just be throwing out these numbers because, oh, they want to vaccinate the state of emergency allows them to get more and more hepatitis A vaccines. And they claim that the at-risk population are the homeless and drug users. Hmm, I would have thought hepatitis C, not hepatitis A. Um, so, many of us do feel that they are disappearing the homeless in many states? Will they forcibly vaccinate this population in California, the homeless? Perhaps. Because this is an outbreak. And it's deadly. Even though hepatitis A has never been a serious disease. It's not a chronic disease. Um, it's contagious. Uh, but people who infected can make a full recovery. So what made it deadly now? What made it deadly is agendas to depopulate the agenda, uh, to depopulate the, the uh, population and to declare this state of emergency so that they can vaccinate everybody that they want to. Who is at risk for hepatitis C? Hepatitis C. Um, LA Times claims that the at-risk population is limited to the homeless and the drug users or drug addicts. But the at-risk population, according to the CDC, is anyone who travels to or lives in countries where hepatitis A is common, family members or caregivers of a recent adoptee from countries where hepatitis A is common, if you live with somebody with hepatitis A, men who have sexual contact with other men, use illegal drugs, whether injected or not. That's interesting. Um, because if you're using illegal drugs and they happen to be pills, why, why would you be at risk for hepatitis A that way? Um, I don't know. But it sounds like if, if that's an at-risk population, whether or not they're using um, needles, then wouldn't everybody be at risk using any kind of drug? Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, uh, clotting factor disorders, hemophiliacs are at risk and having sexual contact with anybody who has hepatitis A. But what, what makes hepatitis A contagious is that you have taken in by mouth any kind of object or food or drinks contaminated by the feces or stool of an infected person. Okay. Um, well, most people, I think, do wash their hands pretty regularly. And, um, it, you know, if that's the case, then the entire population in California is at risk. So you're going to suggest that it's only the homeless people who are maybe contaminating with their feces other objects or, or drug addicts? It can also be 
anybody who does not wash their hands regularly, a parent or caregiver that doesn't properly wash their hands after changing diapers or the stool of an infected person, or when someone has sex with an infected person. It can be spread by eating or drinking food or water contaminated with the virus. And that can include frozen or undercooked food. Uh, how did this how did this outbreak start? Do we have any idea how this outbreak started? No, we don't. So there was an outbreak in Pennsylvania um, a couple of years ago, 2003. But that was due to contaminated green onions at a restaurant. So, if we don't even know how the outbreak started, then how do you know who is at risk? Because if the outbreak started by contaminated food at a particular restaurant or a, a particular supermarket, then you would think that those people who shop there are at risk. So why are they just suggesting that it's the homeless community or drug users. <sighs> the nightmare continues to unfold. And yes, it really it really is true. And I'm sorry, I'm having a I'm having a hard time. I'm posting a video about these frequencies this week because I have really um, experienced something that I haven't before. And I'm having great difficulty using my brain, great difficulty talking. But somehow I can still struggle to use those critical thinking cells in my brain to realize that we're being lied to once again. All right. All links are below. Uh, the madness. It... Doesn't it get to you sometimes? It really does get to me sometimes.